Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. And then he goes on, he tells us, now I urge you, verse 15, you brethren, I urge you that, and, and he says, you know the household of, uh, of Stephanus, and, and that they were the first fruits of Achaia. They, they devoted themselves to the ministry of the saints. He says, he says I, I tell you, be also in subjection to such men, and to everyone who helps in the work of, uh, and, and the labors talking about the the work the 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 late guys i got news for you if you ever thought you want to be a minister because it's an easy job <laughs> he's describing it really good who um it's called work and labor and you in for the gals you know labor of childbirth that kind of labor well trying to serve in the lord sometimes is like about as painful just to put it in, in, in into perspective I've been doing it for about 35 years. I cannot lie to you. The labor of the ministry can be really painful. It can bring you great pain in serving others. And, the, and, and some of the stuff you have to live through and you have to see others do to one, you know, just what people do to each other. Or as the laborer, what they do to you. You know, you're trying to help them and, and it's like, um, what, what, like helping that wounded wounded uh, animal and in you know you're trying to help it but it doesn't really perceive it as help and so you reach out to bandage it and it just you know like bear paws your face off and you're like thanks i really like helping you you know the, it, it can be painful there there are things that people do to others when they're hurting that just knee jerk reactions and if you're in the ministry let me tell you what, do you run into this at all sean you you know yeah this happens all the time in the ministry. But Paul says to these guys, listen, you guys know about Stephanus. You know, you know about his household, how they serve the Lord, how they're in the labor of the ministry. And he says to them something interesting. He says, be in subjection to such men as these. You know, to the guys that, that serve the Lord, go up alongside them and say, hey, how can I help you? You know, to be subject means you're saying, I'm gonna. You, you're, you're, you call the shot. I'll do what you need. What do you need help with? Um, we would use the example today, like of how the employee would go to the boss and say, "Boss, what do you want me to do today?" You know, that's being subject. Uh, it, or in their case, this is, they they knew about this more from the from the standpoint of Rome was in charge at that time, Caesar, and whatever Caesar said, if you were in his in his realm, you did. You know, it was just just part of the chain of command now one of the problems is, is that people whether they realize it or not they're subject to something in their lives Paul I remember turn to Romans 7 I want to show you something Paul said you have to be careful he says whatever you present yourself to in Romans 7 Paul says don't go presenting your the members of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but instead present yourselves to God as alive from the dead. For your members, they're to be instruments of righteousness to God. For sin is not to be master over you. For you're not under the law, but you're under grace. What shall we say then, verse 15? Shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. May it never be, he says. Do you not know that when you present yourself to someone as a slave for obedience, another way of saying that is when you present yourself to someone as a subject, whatever they say, then he says you are the slave of the one whom you obey. Now, if you present yourself to sin, guess what you wind up obeying? What becomes your master? That sin. If you present yourself to sin and you go, it says something like, Pastor, I don't really have a problem, but, well, could you pray for me? I, I might have a little problem. I've you know, been struggling with this, this issue of, you know, um, drinking. And, uh, you know, I was thinking after church, I'm going to go to the bar down there. Look, if you present yourself to the bar, right, and you have a, and you have a weakness in that area, 
You just presented yourself to sin. What will become your master? That that alcohol. That it would be. You will become mastered by whatever sin you present yourself to. If it's pornography, if it's if it's hatred, whatever it is you present yourself to, it takes over. Now, does Paul want anybody to be presenting themselves to that? No. He says, present yourself to God. As alive to God. Here I am, Lord. How many of you wake up in the morning and go, good morning, Lord, here I am. I present myself to you. Use me how you want to use me. Now, I can tell you that this is new, transformed thinking for Izzy that he had to learn from this thing called the Bible. Because I didn't used to wake up and think, here I am, God. Use me. I used to wake up and think, what am I going to do today? What sin am I going to... I didn't call it sin. I said, what fun am I going to go do? <laughs> and, 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 my, you know, and that's, by the way, one of the deceptions of sin is, is because the Bible says sin is good for a season, we can sometimes look at sin through rosy colored glasses of, oh, the good old days when I used to do this sin. And we don't forget about the bad part of those good old days that came the next day, you know, or the trickle-down effect that came a few weeks later because of that sin that you did. Sin always comes with a stinger. Don't be fooled. Sin always, whatever the Bible says, whatever you sow, that's what you what? You reap. Always comes with that stinger of death. And, man, we sometimes glorify the sin when we should be glorifying God. Paul says, you're supposed to use your body to glorify God. That's what it's given to you for. So you can, you can do this. Now, he said in verse 19, I'm speaking in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. Romans 7, 19, he says, For just as you presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, resulting in further lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, resulting in in sanctification. You'll be set apart for God's use. He says, when you were slaves to sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. Therefore, what benefit were you deriving from the things of which now you're ashamed? For the outcome of those things is death. But now, having been freed from sin, and now you get to be enslaved to God, he says, and you get to derive your benefit, resulting in sanctification. And the outcome of sanctification is everlasting life man we get everlasting life and then well one of the most quoted verses of the bible romans 7 23 for the wages or 6 i'm sorry 6 23 romans 6 23 the wages of sin is death but the free gift of god is what eternal life in christ jesus our lord wow what a wonderful thing that we have that free gift of eternal life but guys Paul is wrapping up his letter to the church at Corinth and he says to these guys, guys, make sure you present yourselves as, and, and be subject to the guys that are serving as leaders in the faith, the ones that are laboring and working for the ministry. Go to them and say, hey, here I am. How can I help? Do you think that the guys that labor in the faith ever need a helping hand? How about setting up this stuff on Sunday? taking it down you know the, the it's just a big chore and I look at it, I go Lord you know you, you, see now I had Sean in my early college and career days we called him the bulldozer we had him and Rusty the tank and the bulldozer when I needed a wall blown out I just called these two guys I didn't even bother messing getting anyone else in the church I didn't need a con contractor because all I had to do is point we were in this old building called Chuck E. Cheese and uh, pizza building. And, you know, like we wanted to blow out a wall between the, the mop closet and the next room over and make it a little bit bigger for the Sunday school. Could you guys um, see this wall here? We want this gone. And I would just go like that so that the, the sheetrock didn't bounce into my eyes because these guys could like put their shoulders in and bang into a wall and <laughs> knock it out. I mean, we had these six booths in Chuck E. Cheese. Just picture the, the tables, you know, with the booths at the, at the Chuck E. Cheese. And they have the, they're all built in. And they have the little table. And I'm like, guys, it's, it's just in the way. We need more room in the Sunday school area. Could you guys take those tables and those booths out? 
I was telling Sean this story. Do you remember when you did that? He goes, oh. And then I go, remember you guys? And Rusty used to delight in just grabbing stuff and just... He grabbed the tabletops, ripped them off the wall, goes to the next one, rips them off the wall. And then he goes to the booths, and the booths, they start hitting the booths and knocking them, and they're not coming out. And I'm like, and if these two guys can't move the booth, so this, somebody really nailed this thing to the floor, you know. I'm like trying to figure out what's going on, and they keep ripping, and finally Rusty somehow got a, got a finger underneath one of them and rips out the seat. Sean's just grabbing the other end. They're just jerking the thing. I was like, man, that was quick. But there's this wall in between the booths. It's only this high, I'm thinking. It doesn't stand a chance. Sean on one side, Rusty on the other side. They just grab it and start going like this, rocking the wall back and forth. But it's still not coming out. And remember that wall? They're rocking this wall back and forth. We're like, why is this little wall not falling down with these two men that are, you know, easily in the 300-pound range of muscle tanks and they it, it's rocking but it's not it's not popping o usually a big wall will fall over and i'm like some somebody built this wall super strong and finally they they grabbed one of them and pulled it straight up off the ground and there was conc there was poles the big old metal poles sunk into the concrete and then we figured out why they couldn't just knock it over but i got sunday school kids coming soon i need those poles gone guys can you get rid of the poles you should have seen that one. They grab the pole. They start having this tug of war game, you know, ar, 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 and it's it's poured into the concrete. It's fixed. Not for long though. They finally just grabbed it and went, Droom! and just jerked. I mean, jerked it out of the concrete. I was like, that was pretty good. Five more. <laughs> In about an hour, all gone. Now that they knew the. You know, what was the construction? That first one was the hard one. And after that, they, they're like, no problem. We got it figured out. I was like, these guys are handy, you know? But, but they used to always show up and go, what do you need? What do you need? What can we help with? What, what can we use? What, what our gifts are? What can we get, use that for the Lord for? What, what? And see, in the ministry... Paul is telling the church at Corinth, guys, you got to go to your, to your leaders who are there laboring and looking after you and say, hey, I'm just here to be in subject to you. I'm, what do you need? Because there's so much work in the ministry that goes on behind the scenes. People don't realize. And they're sitting there going, I wish God would use me. Oh, I wish he would tell me something. Well, if you never go to the, to the leader and say, is there anything to be done? Then you don't know. I mean, some of the gals here know they show up Saturdays and they show up Sunday after church to help, you know, with the whole preparation of the meal that we serve and the food prep that goes on and then, the, and then afterwards, the cleanup. My wife usually, you know, she pretty much kills herself for three days in the lead up to getting everything ready. But then at the end, you just feel like falling over and then there's this mountain of dishes, you know. And by God's grace, a couple of the ladies said, is there anything you need help with? Could we come help wash the dishes? I was like, glory be, Jesus, thank you, you know. Because, you know, to finish preaching and then go home and have a mountain of dishes and know that I'm probably not going to get to eat lunch because the dishes are in the way, you know, and there's no room. And, and, you know, small practical things us guys think of, like, you know, we like to eat, we're driven by our stomachs. And, and, and when people go, is there anything you need help with, Pastor? Do you need me to preach for you? No, not really. But if you could wash dishes. <laughs> you know, there are labors that you can do. And some of you, by the way, some of you are going, thank God, I don't want to get up in front and preach because you, you feel like you'd vomit. if you. Get. It's not your calling. But you go, I could do dishes. Or I could help with opening the cans. You know, I just need a few guys with strong wrists for turning the cans and that we open with the can openers because we tried all the electric ones we burn them out i don't i don't think they may, if anyone finds an electric can opener that lasts and i mean lasts like industrial kind let me know because we have burnt out so many can openers with the little e and you're sitting there and the can's just not going and you're just like okay give me the give me i i went and bought those old echoes They're, if those of you remember from the 50s the little steel one with the little yeah thing on the end and a little ball eBay still has them 
I found two old ones, and I'm like, these, they're not comfortable, but they work. So I, it, it's like a, a P-54. It's like the old, you know, the one we use, the Army military one that just like, ink, 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 they, they're pain, but they work. They're slow. But when you got to open 50 cans a week to do a breakfast, you, you just think, Lord, this is, and, and people say to me, oh, I don't know. I probably couldn't be used. And you're probably sitting on one of them can openers at your house. This, you know, you're, you're just going, I don't know what to do with this thing. You know, just, I don't want to throw it away because it costs a lot, but it's just in my way. You will never find out how you can be used if you never go to the ones like Paul is telling them. Go to the house of Stephanus and ask him. Say, what do you need help with? Because you might have a gift that that, that, that leader needs help with and it would be right up your alley, okay? I mean, we got Pancake Lady. Just just happened to just show up. Do you need me to make pancakes? Yeah. What a blessing to have a Sharon, you know? What a blessing to have a Deb. To help in, 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 uh, guys, whatever your gifts are, you, you can use it for the Lord. But Paul's like, Guys, you gotta go talk to the leaders. You gotta, you gotta be subject to them. You gotta be willing to say, "Hey, what do you need help with?" Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, amazinggracekona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's amazinggracekona.com. Mahalo and God bless.